नेक्स्ट लेट मी डिस्कस अबाउट द फोटो कीमोथेरेपी राइट फोम फोटो कीमोथेरेपी इन द एसोसिएटेड डर्मटोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम्स नाउ रिमेंबर इफ यू टेक दिस फोटो कीमोथेरेपी अकॉर्डिंग टू द वेव लेंथ द यू वी रेडिएशन इट इज क्लासिफाइड राइट इट इज क्लासिफाइड एज यू वी ए यू वी बी एंड एज वेल एज यू वी सी ऑल राइट सो रिमेंबर राइट अकॉर्डिंग टू द वेव लेंथ ऑफ द लाइट दिस पर्टिकुलर यू वी रेडिएशन सो अल्ट्रा वायलेट रेडिएशन दे आर क्लासिफाइड इन टू राइट दे आर क्लासिफाइड इन टू यू वी ए यू वी बी एंड एज वेल एज यू वी सी नाउ इफ यू टेक द वेव लेंथ ऑफ अल्ट्रा वायलेट ए लाइट द वेव लेंथ इज अराउंड थ्री ट्वेंटी टू फोर हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर्स एंड इफ यू टेक यू वी बी द वेव लेंथ इट इज अराउंड टू नाइंटी टू थ्री ट्वेंटी नैनोमीटर्स राइट टू नाइंटी टू थ्री ट्वेंटी नैनोमीटर्स एंड इफ यू टेक यू वी सी द वेव लेंथ इट इज अराउंड हंड्रेड टू टू नाइंटी नैनोमीटर्स राइट हंड्रेड टू टू नाइंटी नैनोमीटर्स सो this is the classification of your uv radiation according to the wavelength now out of this the multiple choice question you see here you take this uvb uvb it is most erythrogenic and as well as melanogenic radiation right so remember this is the most erythrogenic wherein this can cause the reddening of the skin and melanogenic parallelly it will also stimulate the melanocyte all right so uvb remember it is most erythrogenic and as well as the melanogenic radiation now next we have what is called as the puva therapy for psoriasis now if you take this particular puva therapy like what we are giving is we are giving the a type of a soralin so this particular puva it stands for soralin and as well as the ultraviolet a now if you take this particular the soralin the type of soralin what we use is it is 8 methoxy soralin right 8 methoxy soralin which is the oral formulation now this 8 methoxy soralin this should be followed by the ultraviolet a right this should be followed by right this should be followed by the ultraviolet a you take this combination that is 8 methoxy soralin followed by ultraviolet a this is approved for the treatment of right this combination it is approved for the treatment of vitiligo right approved for the treatment of psoriasis and also cutaneous t cell lymphoma right also cutaneous t cell lymphoma all right so these are the uses of this particular combination that is 8 methoxy soralin followed by the ultraviolet a now you take the adverse effects of this particular puva therapy the major side effects include nausea blistering of the skin and as well as painful reddening of the skin which is called painful erythema so if you take the major adverse effects that includes nausea skin blisters and next right next painful erythema so this is the major adverse effects of this particular puva therapy and let me tell you another important point you take this puva therapy it increases the risk of melanoma and it also increases the risk of squamous cell carcinoma as well right it increases the risk of melanoma and as well as right as well as the squamous cell carcinoma now in this particular puva therapy like we have what is called as the photophoresis now let me tell you what do you mean by this photophoresis 
So before discussing photophoresis, let me shortly revise here what we have discussed. Remember, the photochemotherapy is another treatment in dermatology. Right? And according to the wavelength, ultraviolet radiations may be classified into ultraviolet A, B and C. In case of ultraviolet A, the wavelength is around 320 to 400 nanometers. In ultraviolet B, it is 290 to 320 nanometers. In ultraviolet C, it is 100 to 290 nanometers. Right? So this is the classification according to the wavelength. And you take ultraviolet B, this is most erythrogenic and as well as melanogenic radiation. And you take what is called as the PUVA therapy. PUVA, it stands for solar, Soralen and UVA. Now, you take the PUVA, that is 8-methoxy Soralen, followed by ultraviolet A. It is approved for the treatment of vitiligo, psoriasis and cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And the major side effects include nausea, blistering and painful erythema. And remember, this particular combination, it increases the risk of melanoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Now let me discuss about what is called as the photophoresis. Now in this photochemotherapy, let me discuss the photophoresis and photodynamic therapy. Now if you take this photophoresis, remember in case of photophoresis, like in PUA therapy, we were using the oral methoxysorolin, right? So first the individual is given the oral methoxysorolin after that the leukocytes are separated from the whole blood and how is this particular leukocyte separated from the whole blood the leukocytes are separated from the whole blood using extracorporeal pheresis right there is a device which is called as extracorporeal pheresis through which the leukocytes are separated from the whole blood and that particular leukocytes they are exposed to uva radiation and this particular irradiated cells are then transfused to the patient. Okay. So what we do in case of photophoresis is after, right, after oral methoxysoralin, right, after oral methoxysoralin, leukocytes, right, leukocytes, they are separated from the whole blood. Right. And how are they separated? They are separated by using extracorporeal pheresis device extracorporeal pheresis device right which is called as ecp device and this separated leukocytes right this particular separated leukocytes they are exposed to uva radiation right they are exposed to ultraviolet a radiation now this particular irradiated cells they are then returned to the patient right irradiated cells then they are transfused to the patient now where is this particular ecp effective remember this extracorporeal pheresis is effective for cutaneous t cell lymphoma right effective for cutaneous t cell lymphoma right so this is your photophoresis next to the photophoresis like we have another way of delivering the photochemotherapy which is called as the photodynamic therapy right which is called as the photodynamic therapy now if you take this photodynamic therapy remember this photodynamic therapy it combines the photosensitizing drugs and what are these photosensitizing drugs they are mostly the porphyrins this particular photodynamic therapy it combines the photosensitizing drugs right these photosensitizing drugs they include porphyrins this photosensitizing drugs they are combined with visible light for the treatment of non melanoma skin cancers right they are combined with visible light all right See, whereas here, what are we doing? In case of photophoresis, we are giving oral methoxysorolin and then we are separating the WBC of the patient by using the ECP device and then they are again transfused back to the patient. And this particular exposed cells, they are irradiated to the patient. And where is this used? This is used in case of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Whereas in case of photodynamic therapy, what we are doing is we are combining the photosensitizing drugs, mostly porphyrins, 
with the visible light and this particular combination remember this is used for the treatment of non melanoma skin cancers and actinic keratosis right used in case of non melanoma skin cancers and apart from this non melanoma skin cancers they are also used in case of right they are also used in case of actinic keratosis so this is about your the photochemotherapy next let me discuss the other group which are being used in dermatology that is your anti metabolites now let me tell you the anti metabolites right let me tell you the anti metabolites used in the dermatology the anti metabolites which are used in dermatology they include methotrexate then we have azathioprine and then 5 fluorouracil so you take the first drug that is methotrexate right now methotrexate let me tell you in which all skin problems or dermatological issues we use this methotrexate remember this particular methotrexate it is used for moderate to severe psoriasis right moderate to severe psoriasis and apart from this also used in case of pempigus vulgaris right and other dermatological problem like pityriasis rubra right the pityriasis rubra and apart from this pityriasis rubra is also used in case of sle systemic lupus erythematosus dermatomyositis right dermatomyositis and as well as in case of a cutaneous t cell lymphoma right cutaneous t cell lymphoma so these are the clinical conditions where this methotrexate is being used right and if you take the absolute contraindications of methotrexate the absolute contraindications of methotrexate it includes pregnancy and as well as lactation right why is this methotrexate contraindicated in pregnancy or lactation is remember the mechanism of action of the methotrexate is it will inhibit the folic acid formation and during pregnancy or during lactation folic acid is very very important right for the fetal survival or for the fetal organogenesis and if methotrexate is used this will be acting as a teratogenic in pregnancy next apart from methotrexate the other anti metabolite what we use is azathioprine right it is your azathioprine now if you take this azathioprine remember it is a steroid sparing agent right it is a steroid sparing agent and where is this azathioprine used is in case of right used in case of pemphigus vulgaris and apart from this pemphigus vulgaris is also used in case of bullus pemphigoid right also used in case of the bullus pemphigoid used in case of dermatomyositis next in case of atopic dermatitis right used in case of atopic dermatitis sle psoriasis and then bhaiseid's disease so remember these are the clinical conditions where this azathioprine which is an anti metabolite which is being used next lastly we have 5 fluorouracil right the anti metabolite which is used in dermatological problems is your 5 fluorouracil remember it is used for actinic keratosis and superficial basal cell carcinoma right used in case of actinic keratosis and superficial basal cell carcinoma so these are the clinical conditions where your methotrexate azathioprine and 5 fluorouracil are being used now next to this anti metabolites which are used in dermatology next let me discuss the calcineurin inhibitors which are being used in the various dermatological issues